Hi everyone, Nathan here from the ebookreader.com. For this video, I'm going to show you PDF files on the Nook. Um, first, I'm going to show you the Nook's stock functionality, and then I'll show you a couple of different uh, PDF apps here. So I'll go ahead and open up the regular Nook's um, PDF app here. So I have set everything set up in Dropbox, so I can easily jump between these different apps. Okay, so with the regular Nook app, you can use the page buttons, of course. Um, it pretty much just lays it out like this. There is no landscape mode, unfortunately. So you've just got the portrait mode with the farthest out setting. There's no zoom settings or anything. The only options there are is uh, text reflow. So when you have it set on the second A, that means you're set at the default layout for the PDF. Any other um, layout's going to uh, reflow the, the uh, PDF uh, text-wise. So sometimes this works well. Look, looks like it works okay for this PDF. You're going to get a lot of page breaks. But um, otherwise, it, it works pretty well for text-based PDFs, but it's not going to work for any kind of PDFs with like lots of images or anything. Okay, so otherwise, we've got the you got a page slider right there, and you got the go-to page where you can enter pages directly. And otherwise, other than that, there's just the table of contents if the book has it, and then there's also um, find, which uh, you can search for stuff. So the, the on-screen features don't work for PDFs like with regular notebooks, so you don't have the highlights or the dictionary or anything when you're using the on-screen features. So really that's pretty much how the Nook app, uh, the Nook's dock functionality wraps up. So uh, there's really not a whole lot of features with it. So your best bet is uh, if you really want some PDF functionality on the Nook is to root it and use some Android apps. Okay, so for the first app that I'll show you, the best one I, I've got setting up here is probably Easy PDF Reader. I'll go ahead and open one of these with it. So uh, this costs like 99 cents in the Amazon App Store and on the Google App Store. So it's uh, one of the more inexpensive PDF apps, and it does uh, have a lot of features. Works pretty well here, actually. It's just got a lot of flashing when you turn pages and whatnot. So you've got the um, scrolling up and down. One thing that I found that helps a lot with this app is turning off the animated page turn so you're not constantly kind of going around. You can, um, when you get to the bottom of the page, there's this arrow down here. And so it, uh, it works a little bit better, I found, than um, just using the, the uh, one with animated page turns because it does a whole lot of refreshing. There's lots of flashing. And there just kind of is anyway, but um, otherwise, uh, yeah, you get to the bottom of the page and it does help with having that turned off. So you scroll around like this, it does get a little, uh, there's lots of flashing at times um, because of the refresh. Obviously this app isn't designed for ink, um, but otherwise we've got some, a lot of features here. So if you hold down on something, you've got copy, you can look up on the web, color dictionary actually, I haven't been able to get this to work. It always asks to download something that isn't there. Um, but anyway, um, let's go back here. Other stuff we've got here for the on-screen tasks. We've got the highlight, underline, strikeout, sticky note, freehand. So what freehand does is, uh, what it does is it'll save an image for this right here. And then you can use your hand to write uh, on the screen. So you can uh, write notes or whatever. Obviously it's not super accurate, but uh, it actually works pretty well. And then you can save it or undo whatever right here. Okay, so other than that, there's a bunch of on-screen settings as well. Uh, we've got some different options. You got search. This turns the pages right here. There's bookmarks, and it'll put the little bookmark bar down here like this. So this is a little thing you can scroll ahead if you want to uh, scan ahead with the pages here. Uh, and then there's uh, some other, a whole bunch of uh, settings in here in the menu. You got text reflow. There's a, uh, oh, um, you can fit the columns, uh, horizontal lock. So there's a bunch of stuff in here. Obviously, voice reading isn't going to work because the Nook doesn't have any speakers. But other than that, most of these features I've tried, everything seems to work pretty well. Like I said, uh, going into settings here and then changing the um, scroll, the way it scrolls does help a lot. And you can also change some other stuff here as well. Okay, so I went ahead and loaded up a two-column PDF and switched it over to portrait mode just to give you an idea of what the, what it looks like in portrait. So you, you can do the scanning this way. Obviously, I got it set up to turn the pages with that little button again. So uh, if you got a uh, portrait, it looks like this. Obviously, you can set up different zooming options. So you can double tap and fit it to set it up to fit to the columns width here. Let me get that little thing out of the way. Um, like I said, the page buttons don't work on this app, unfortunately. So you got to use the on-screen scroll. So there's some different options for a lot of different options for viewing PDFs with the 
with this particular app. I'd say it's definitely the best option. Let me go ahead and show you a couple of the other apps in here. The main thing, like you saw right there, is just lots of flashing when you're scrolling. That's the main downside with the Easy PDF Reader app. So, okay, Aldeco, it sports PDFs, but it doesn't, um, let me go here, I gotta, it's easier to go in through Dropbox and just uh, open it up this way. So, what I was saying about Aldeco is the main problem with it is that it sets up for zooming, you need to have pinch to zoom, and the pinch to zoom doesn't work on the Nook because it's not set up for pinch to zoom. I think the uh, screen technology is more than capable of doing uh, multi-touch gestures like that, but it's just not set up on the Nook Touch. It just has single touch gestures, so you can't zoom in. So there is uh, orientation, you can change it to landscape mode, but since you can't zoom in, it does uh, the whole page to it fits the height, so that's sort of disappointing. So you pretty much just got portrait mode with this app, um, and then you've got the a few different settings, but uh, there's not a whole lot going for the uh, PDF uh, features on this one. So you got table contents, go to, and like I said, you can change the screen orientation. And that's about it with Aldeco. So um, it's pretty basic as far as PDF goes. Um, a couple others that I've tried here, let's go back to the home. Uh, I tried the uh, Beam Reader and Men Atano ra uh, Reader. These are both paid apps as well. Um, I was trying the free trial. Beam Reader, it's really basic, but it seems to do a decent job. Let's see here, I'll show you some different stuff. Um, so what it does is, it, it, what it's good for is it's kind of got a nice layout. Um, and you, you double tap to just zoom in, I believe. Um, you've got some different, oh no, you got the uh, icon down here to slide the zoom. So it does have a nice zoom settings. Um, and you can zoom it out right here. Um, but it doesn't really have any other settings. Uh, basically what we've just got here is, you, you scroll to turn pages and it's kind of awkward sometimes. It doesn't seem to always go to the next page. But it does work um, well enough. You can kind of just sort of gets a lot of flashing, like the other apps, as you can tell. Um, and you can use these little arrows to change pages as well. And this little guy right here will bring up the page button or the go-to page. And then if you hit the menu, you've got a few other options. Just to zoom in, go to page, uh, bookmarks. Uh, text view is reflow, of course. So you're probably going to destroy anything with uh, images, but. Uh, the same old stuff applies, you'll get some weird stuff going on, but it'll probably work for text-based PDFs. Okay, so the last e PDF reader I tried was the, the Manito Mantano reader, which is uh, the free trial right here. So that's kind of an expensive one, it's like $4.99 I believe, it's more for regular ebooks, uh, but it supports PDFs as well, so it actually does a pretty good job, but there's not a whole lot of um, zoom settings or anything like that. So basically what you've got is it'll lay it out like this. So you can switch it to landscape mode as well. And there are different fitting options down here. So there's like highlights and stuff, but I found uh, that it's really hard to get it to, uh, like if you're trying to highlight a specific word, it's really hard to get it to highlight that specific word and um, it, it, to end to end. It's sort of just like sort of picks out letters and it's kind of hard to get it to accurately do. So you got some different fit uh, widths and fit the ho vertically right here. So when you double tap on something, it will, zoom in. So it's pretty nice at that because it fits it to the width of your screen when you have it set up on that one setting there. So uh, it works pretty good for that and otherwise it's probably not going to be the best option. Uh, P Easy PDF Reader definitely has a lot more um, settings, a lot more features, but it does have a good set of stuff down here. I mean you've got some dis different display options, you got the dictionary and bookmarks. So uh, it is pretty serviceable PDF e Reader, but um, uh, in the end, the Easy PDF Reader is probably the best app for it so far that I've tried. There, obviously, there's some other PDF apps that I haven't tried, but uh, in the end, the Nook Touch isn't really the greatest PDF app or the bit greatest PDF e-reader. Uh, even stuff like the Sony readers and the pocketbooks, their base functionality is probably better than you're going to get with even these um, different apps because they've got some different features that work a lot better that are designed for the device. Where this one is not really designed for it, none of these apps are really designed for it. Uh, E-ink devices, obviously, so there are some issues, lots of flashing, and uh, with page turns, you can nut and whatnot. So I'm going to wrap up this review right here. Check out the ebookreader.com. I'll put up some written review and some more information. Um, thank you for watching.